So for the last month, my sister, who's a zoologist, has been living in the Maasai Mara out in Kenya, uh, tracking, studying hyenas, whatnot. And uh, I just wandered out into the wilderness to see if I could meet up with her. There's about like 20 antelope or ipex or whatever the deer type thing in Kenya are. I'm going to see if I can be like Jane Goodall up in here and blend in with the herd. The blending in thing kind of backfired because now every time I get close I start coughing up a big old ball of grass and uh, scare everybody away. So I'm gonna try that again. And you didn't see I did like, like 14 takes of that. I had a lot of grass in me. sneaking up on a giraffe. He, he, totally, he totally knows I'm here, but I'm pretending like he doesn't. Shh. Okay, so I finally found the perfect place to film. If I stake out this uh, giraffe carcass, there have been scavengers coming in and out. Um, there's a hyena and a fox that already ran off before I came up. Um, the, the birds are all hiding over here. here a while and see what I can find. I'm going to play dead for a while and see if I can get one of these buzzards to try and eat me. Okay, we got a mongoose done. I'm going to stick the camera in and see what happens. I don't know if anything happened because I couldn't see the camera. I'd been assuming that the reason they thought I shouldn't wander through the jungle was that I might get eaten by a lion or gored by a rhino or something, but I realized they also might have meant that I don't know how to get back to where I was. I've been walking for at least like five hours now and I just did one of those things where I, I thought I wasn't going in the right direction and then I passed by the same giraffe carcass again in a direction that is in no way where I need to go and so I realized that I have no idea where I am or what direction I need to go in and I'm in the middle of, uh, of the Maasai Mara and uh, this is going to be awesome. If I just ran it for several days, I'm going to be pissed that my battery isn't going to last long enough to see if I get like eaten by a lion or something. I found cows. 
I found cows. That means civilization is close. Somewhere. Tumble. Talek? Hi. Talek, this way? Talek, that way? That way? Yes, yes. It's both ways? Okay. Apparently Talek is both that way and that way. Okay, so I'm now joined by an actual professional zoologist. So uh, this is what I, I believe is called a giraffe, correct? Yes. And uh, this I believe. This is the Maasai giraffe. Okay, and I believe the proper term for the behavior he's exhibiting is standing there, no, hanging he's out. He's being vigilant right now. He's looking for predators. Okay, so he's standing there checking us out. Yes. This is the proper scientific term. Yes. For what's happening. Yes, he's checking us out. I, I cut a head off a sub-adult hyena this morning, and I want someone from Fisi Camp to come and pick it up. It was pretty gross, but typical. Stand up, and ready for a lift off. Some animals are worse than another one. Elephants hate balloons. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you look delicious. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Korean guy. <laughs> Yeah. Is that puncture marks to the neck? I think so. That would that would be a leopard or lion. I think by the way, bones have all been crushed up. Yeah. Hyenas have eaten hyena. Sometimes they do that. They do. Mm -hmm. Jeez, it's pelvis. Pelvic bone. One can't imagine what has happened here, I guess. But I'm looking at all these smashed up here. Been crushed. Mm. Now I'm going to cut the cheese for lunch with my knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is going on the internet. Yes, it's it on is. YouTube. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you said you said you want to eat dog. No, no. <laughs> that's nothing for Korean to eat. That you don't know how many heads of skanky hyenas I've cut off in my time. Yeah. If any rangers had seen that, we would get in a lot of trouble and probably get fined. Mm -hmm. How much? Like $50? I know. $23? $23. $23 fine. $23.50. Okay. 
Oh, uh, it went up. It used to be twenty, th just twenty three. Oh, now it's twenty three dollars. All right, cents. cool. Going on safari can be a very confusing and dangerous experience, but if you know what to watch out for and learn a little bit about the animals you're going to see before going out, it can be a very rewarding one. <laughs> It's important while you're on safari, if you want to stay alive, never to leave the vehicle. They're all looking straight at us. Now, when you're dealing with wild animals, you need to remember that you're in their world. So you need to watch your boundaries and show some respect to make sure that they're not feeling intimidated. Uh, you need to watch for behaviors like forward thrusting motions, uh, grunting, uh, ears folded back, bared teeth. That's when you know that you need to back up. If you don't see any of those behaviors, it's perfectly okay to run up and try to ride them. And it's not just danger on the ground you have to watch out for, you also have to make sure there's nothing up in the trees that could pounce down on you when you're not paying attention. important never ever to turn your back on wild animals unless you are a professional video podcaster. If you are charged by a buffalo while you're on safari, it's important to look for an area like this, an indentation, and then to get down and lie as flat as possible, like this. The buffalo cannot get its horns at you. You will be trampled, you will be hurt, but you won't be killed. If you're attacked by a hippo, move to higher ground. If you're attacked by a lion, punch it in the nose to show dominance. If you're attacked by a warthog, find a diplomatic solution to your problems. If you see a hyena, probably nothing's going to happen to you. If you're attacked by a wildebeest, you're kind of screwed because they killed the Lion King. If confronted by an elephant that's rather angry, you again, you have to stand your ground. Try to make yourself look as big as possible, wave your arms, and shout at the elephant. Tell that an elephant is really going to charge if its ears are crinkled in front. Now, a rhino, just walk up right behind him, just give him a little scratch on the bum. Rhinos love to be scratched on the bum. A hippo can bite a crocodile in half. That's the last thing he said. <laughs> a hippo can bite a crocodile in half, but a crocodile can bite a Honda Accord into thirds. Last year in the Maasai Mara, 17 people were eaten by vervet monkeys, but it's okay because they were all dicks. The big five are the five hardest animals to hunt, which are the leopard, lion, rhino, elephant, and buffalo. This is a cory bustard, which is the world's largest flying bird. Ducks are the only birds that are mammals. A hyena jaw can exert 9,000 newtons of pressure. The closest living relative of the water buffalo is another water buffalo. Topi's head bob as a form of social recognition between cotton specifics. Rhinos are the only animals that can't poop. Six million wildebeest follow the rain into northern Tanzania and the Maasai Mara. Undergraduates in animal behavior and psychology don't know diddly crap about animals. See, I'm already about ready to throw up, and she's already having migraines, and we just started walking. So that just goes to show that's just our normal state of being. Kilimanjaro, woo! Let's go.
Those are our porters up ahead. It's their job to make us look bad for any sense of accomplishment we get by running up ahead of us in their flip-flops and pajama bottoms to set up camp and make dinner before we get there. Going to the top of Kilimanjaro, yo. This fight, but you may think, is it too far? Oh no. So many people have done it. Made it all the way to the top of the summit. I'm never, ever, ever climbing a mountain again. Is where we camp for the night? That's it for the day? That was easy. Oh, I think we should do it. Let's fire on out. Go to the top. Rock and roll. I'm in it to win it. I came to play. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Full of crap. Yeah, I'm full of crap. You're full of crap. Why am I full of crap? Because. Because why? Because you act like you're all badass. <laughs> I am. Okay. We're on the Coca-Cola route? Yeah, Coca-Cola route. Why do they call it Coca-Cola They call it Coca-Cola because it's easy. So you make it to the top? I hope so. You better hope so, because you know how much street cred you lose if you try to climb Kilimanjaro and fail? Like seven. Seven street creds. This guy, he's climbed 125 times. He's at like... He's Eight at billion. Like, he's at like a 3,236 street creds. That man's got some street cred. Going to the top of Kilimanjaro, yo, we're not taking a car, oh no. Every year half a million try, half of them make it only a handful die. So because of the acclimatization process, they only let you walk up to a few hours a day. And then the rest of it, uh, you just kind of hang out at the campsite and play some Uno and uh, look at some caves. And then the sun goes down and you get bored and... Uh, you just go to bed at like like 6.30. We're gonna climb up Kilimanjaro. Can't believe we're going so darn slow. Taking two days to go, we should have gone in four hours. I'm a cartoonist, so I have no power. So that's the end of day three already, I guess. We will only walked about a couple of hours. The camp we're walking to tomorrow is only another couple hours that way, but they won't let us uh, walk there. So you're going to the top. I don't know. You know. I know. I know that you know that you're going to the top. I like to go to the top. Because here's the thing. I'm going to the top because I'm getting my street creds. Because that's like six street creds to get to the top, but ditching your sister on the side of the mountain is like minus two street creds. Good. But I'll do it. I'll do it and get my four street creds, but I want my six, so you're going up there. You're carrying me. I ain't carrying you. You are walking. You don't have to carry me. No. Get our guide to carry me. You either make it to the top or you die. Because if your sister dies, you're allowed to leave her. No, I'm going to die. Well, you better. I'm kind of bored. Freaking 4.30, we've been here for like, what, five hours? I am so bored on Kilimanjaro. I should have, I should have brought some more Uno cards. But that would, but then we, it'd be the same game. I should have brought something else to do. We should have brought board. like every board game ever imaginable. Because apparently playing Candyland would be more exciting than climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. That's how I feel right now, personally. And then, like, 45 seconds in this video, when we reach the summit, we're going to be like, Oh my god, I'm glad we killed a job, I'm going to die. <laughs> Except that we spent, like, friggin' five days sitting on the side of a mountain, bored out of our balls. There's no oxygen in my brains. do this. I'm not in a base camp yet. I don't want to do it. You know we have like 34 hours until we climb, right?
It's summertime. This is Christmas morning for masochists. Let's do it. So here it is. It's midnight. Uh, I haven't slept a, a wink. But we're about to fire on up Kilimanjaro. Yeah, buddy. This is stupid. Oh, he's so excited he's singing up there. He's done this 125 times. So. Yeah? Yeah. So if he can do it 125 times, you can do it once. Yeah. What are you going to do if you go back? Go Wallow sleep. in your failure? Yep. <laughs> that sounds fun. We're, we're like 10 minutes from camp. We haven't even gotten to the snow yet. Come on, come on. This is so tedious and boring. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be. You're climbing Kilimanjaro. You're ditching me, huh? Yep. Bye. It's just me now. Right there. It's right there. I should be able to get there in two minutes, but I can only take like four steps without taking a nap. I'm gonna make it to the top of Kilimanjaro. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Gilliman. <sighs> you are now at the Gilliman's point. It's uh, 5,681 meters. So Tanzania is welcome. Congratulations. Going to the bottom of Kilimanjaro, been waiting for the day to end all my sorrow. Going back to civilization to take a hot shower. Gonna pass out cold after taking some dawa. Didn't conquer the mountain like I thought I might, but I think that we at least tied. It may have left me wrecked, but I give this mountain all my respect. And, and I think that's the end. I'm gonna have you. Whew! Yeah. Here, don't push any button. No, 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 no button, no button. Just move. Never. Hmm? <laughs>